Let them uh, uh, put you in their heart, Lord, in a way that love will overtake them, Lord, and uh, the process will begin of them meeting you in the last day and being a vessel unto you, Lord. So let us love our neighbor as ourselves over the whole world, Lord, and <coughs> we pray that you just continue to bless the sick and the shirt in of uh, the members of this congregation, Lord. Uh, we pray uh, uh, for the bereaved families that was mentioned earlier, the Luna family, the Dinsmore family, and the Douglas family, Lord. Amen. Continue to bless them, Lord, and uh, let them go forth, Lord, and Amen. around you is pleasing and acceptable unto you, Lord. And we pray that all of us uh, will stay united in your name, Lord. Let us help one another, Lord. Well, let us pick each other up when we're down, Lord, and uh, uh, let us all be on one accord. We pray that you go with us, be with us, keep us all from hurt, harm, and danger. We bless us, we ask in your son, Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.
sound is both sound be 350. Tempted and tried, we are all made to wonder what it should be thus all the day long. While there are others, the living about us, never. sacrifice to come out and worship God in spirit and in truth. As always, we pause and just take a moment of what Jesus done for us, how he suffered, died, and rose again, that you and I may have a chance at eternal life. I'd like to invite you over back to Exodus chapter number 11. Let me reread verse 4 to verse number 8 out of the NIV just for my own purposes here. As we continue talking about our Bible characters, and we're again in the story of Moses. Exodus chapter 11, verse 4 to verse number 8. When you have it, somebody say, Amen. 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 Okay, the word of God says as follows. So Moses said, this is what the Lord says. About midnight I will go throughout Egypt. He says in verse number 5, the next verse. <clears throat> Every firstborn son in Egypt will die. From the firstborn son of Pharaoh, who sits on the throne, to the firstborn son of the female slave, who is at her hand mill, and all the firstborn of the cattle as well. There will be loud wailing throughout Egypt, worse than there has ever been or ever will be again. But among the Israelites, not a dog will bark at any person or animal. Then you will know that the Lord makes a distinction between Egypt and Israel. 
all these officials of yours will come to me bowing down before me and saying, go, you and all the people who follow you. After that, I will leave. Again, that's Exodus chapter 11, verse 4 to verse number 8, out of the King, uh, excuse me, out of the New International Version. And again, we're talking about Moses, but our subtopic today is the blood of the Lamb. The blood of the Lamb. And so we've been studying, of course, Moses and the children of Israel's plight in Egypt. And we know how they had been crying out to God because of the heavy oppressive hand of the Egyptians. And now we're finally seeing the culmination of God's promise that he's going to deliver them from the clutches of their enemy being Egypt. And of course, we're at the final plague. Remember, there were several plagues before that, and none of them would move uh, Pharaoh's heart to let the children of Israel go. And now we're at the one that I call the mega plague. Man. This is the one where God said, I'm going to kill the firstborn males. And he's not saying just of humans, but also of animals. Mm -hmm. And so that was a mighty plague that was about to come through Egypt. You have to understand something. When God moves, sometimes it's a whirlwind. I call it that. Sometimes it comes through and it's just sweeping through and can't nobody do anything about it. Amen. Now remember, we're talking about arguably the greatest nation of that time. The greatest military, the, the might of a financial sector that was unreal. In other words, they were rich and powerful in Egypt. But they didn't have more than God. Amen. They didn't have more money than God. They didn't have more power than God. They didn't have more determination than God. And so it shows you that God is in control then, just like he is now. And so you have to understand that the children of Israel were actually in Egypt for 400 years. And so when God wants to go, you have to go. You see, what he told them is that in order for you to be delivered, you have to put the blood of the lamb on the doorpost of your home. In other words, they had the option of having a goat or a lamb. But we're going to use a lamb just to keep it simple here. So they had to paint that, like, that blood across the door. In other words, they had to demarcate themselves. In other words, they had to distinguish themselves from the rest of Egypt because the death angel was coming through. And there was nothing anybody could stop them, as I said earlier there. And so not only did God say that, put the blood there, and there were some other responsibilities he had to do. The Bible tells us they couldn't eat no bread with leaven. Because why? That would take too long to bake. Remember, you can't put stuff above God. When God wants to move, you got to be ready to move with him. Amen. He told him also, make sure your, your loins are girded. In other words, put on your belts. Because remember, their clothing was long flowing robes and tunics, right? And so they had to be able to get away. So they had to have this material get in the way when they had to leave when God was telling them, it's time to go. Is that all right now? Amen. And so you see that. See, it's, I slay the lamb. They had to be girded. They had to eat. Uh, uh, they had to eat bread with uh, with no leaven in it, and they had to have bitter herbs at the same time. And also, God said, "Have your sandals on your feet." In other words, He wanted no impediments, period, to stop them from going when the death angel came through. And of course, y'all know the rest of the story. That as God said, He surely came through. And the Bible says that the plague was so devastating to the Egyptians that every house had a dead person that was in it. Oh, amen, somebody. Could you imagine that? If God was coming through Gadsden, now think about it now. If I have it correctly in my mind, it was over 600,000 people. I'm talking about men alone. <laughs> the women and children were not uh, uh, counted. That came out of Egypt. That's a major city in the United States. And so how, you, you can't even imagine the number of dead that were around there. I wouldn't want to be in the corner going around there. Could you imagine the stench mm -hmm. of all the dead bodies that were everywhere there? Not only that, but think about the dead cows. Remember, it was also animals. And so there had to be a plague. Now I understand why Pharaoh and everybody else there, like, y'all got to go, you got to go now. <laughs> Amen, somebody. If you Amen. understand that, they were not just getting rid of the children of Israel. They were booting them out. Like, get out. Leave now. And basically, don't you ever 
come back to Egypt. Amen, somebody. If I was one of those children of Israel, I'd be like, thank you. <laughs> Goodbye. Amen, Amen. somebody. Amen. I wouldn't have looked back. I'd have kept going, right? And follow that pillar of cloud, uh, cloud by day and the pillar of cloud by night going on to my Canaan land. Oh, do y'all see the story so far? You see, as we talk about the children of Israel's story in Exodus, the deliverance of them and God walking them through the, uh, the, the wilderness was nothing but symbolism also for what happens today, right? Remember, we're talking about what? Well, we're in the world before we're Christians. We're part of the devil's kingdom, right? Just like they were part of what? Pharaoh's kingdom, right? And it only took God to what? Deliver us from that kingdom of darkness, just like he's doing the children of Israel in our story right now, right? But remember, when any time God wants to deliver you from Satan, blood got to be shed. Amen. So obviously what happened? The lamb's blood had to be shed for them to hide behind that so that God would pass them on by. Amen, somebody. See, again, we talked about it earlier, that the ways of sin is what? It's death. And so obviously then, without the remission of blood, I mean, without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. So again, the Bible says that the children of Israel, going back to Moses' time, they obeyed God and put the blood of the lamb on the door frame of their homes. And that night, the destroying angel from God came through Egypt. He caused all the firstborn males in Egypt to die except for those who were of the children of Israel. Those that hid behind the blood were those that were saved. So Egypt was very sad for, for all the death in the land. Again, every Egyptian home had somebody dead within it. So this massive plague God put upon the, the Egyptians, I wouldn't put on my worst enemy. So what do we learn from this Passover event in the Bible for us today? We'll go to 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse number 7. And you're going to see that God calls Jesus basically our Passover here today. Look what it says. It says, and, and this is uh, Paul through the Holy Spirit talking to the church of Christ located in Corinthian. He said, well, get rid of the old yeast. So that you may be a new unleavened batch, as you really are. For Christ, oh, we know we're talking about Jesus now, right? Yeah. What does God say about him? It says, for Christ, our Passover lamb, has what? Been, been sacrificed. So obviously then, all the things in the Old Testament, yes, they really happened, but they were symbolism for what God was going to do. When he was going to give his own lamb called Jesus. Remember when Jesus was baptized that next day, he walked by John the Baptist. What did John the Baptist say? He said, behold, the Lamb of God that taketh away what? The sin of the world. Oh, yes, my soldiers that are in the audience here today you know exactly what I'm talking about. So again, going back to 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7, it's showing us that Jesus is the Passover Lamb for us today, symbolically speaking. In other words, Jesus was given to us by God the Father. He was sacrificed on the cruel cross of Calvary so that God's punishment at the end of time will pass over us, just like he did in the children of Israel's day. You see, God will judge the world, and some will go to heaven, and others will go to eternal punishment. Matthew 25, verse 31 to 46. At the judgment day, those who obey God by becoming faithful Christians will go to heaven. But unfortunately, those who are not faithful Christians will experience what we call the second death. As Revelation 20, verse 11 to number 15. As it's not popular here today, the Bible does tell us that hell is real. And that's what Revelation 20, verse 11 to 15 is talking about. The second death is being cast into the lake of fire. Of course, that is something you can't put out. That's something that's not going to change. That's something that's going to be eternal. If you're not covered by the blood of the Lamb today who is nobody but Jesus Christ. You see, God's not going to pass over these disobedient people because they are not covered with the blood of Christ. So it's important to give your life to Jesus Christ today. You see, a lot of people don't understand this. The Bible tells us, now remember, the Egyptians didn't know when the death angel was coming. But guess what? He came. We don't know. When God's judgment is going to come through here either, y'all. 
Because the Bible tells us that the day of the Lord, talking about the judgment day, when Jesus comes back to judge us all, it's going to come like a thief in the night. Amen, somebody. I don't know one silly enough thief that will call you on the phone and say, I'm breaking in at 8, 8 p.m. tonight in your house. <laughs> huh? You will be ready Man. for him. Amen. He might not make it down my street. Amen. Man. Let alone get in. Oh, y'all know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Let alone get in the house if he gave me a warning. Well, Jesus is just using symbolism here. He said, can't nobody predict the day when Christ is going to come. And the judgment's going to come. You can watch all the TVN and CBN all you want. But I tell you what, they don't know nothing. Amen. Amen. It should be. Huh? It should be TDN. They don't know nothing. <laughs> and they can talk about all these prophecies and everything they're talking about. Talking about trying to read the sign of the times. But I guarantee you, when Jesus comes back, if we all still living in, they're going to be just as surprised. Surprised. Is everybody else. Man. And that's why you take out your insurance policy. I'm talking about Jesus, right? Man. You got to get covered by the blood of Jesus for God to pass you by on that judgment day. Man. You see, folks, are so, I don't understand how people don't think God is serious, y'all. Remember, he destroyed the world in water. Man. Huh? In Moses' day, he destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah with fire and brimstone, y'all. So he has always shown that he has and can judge and will do so in the future. Amen. But see, the good thing about it is, it's like Romans 6 verse 23 tells us that, that, that God tells us that the ways of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus. You see, the thing is, people don't want to hear fire and brimstone and all that kind of stuff from the pulpit. You don't have to if you're already covered Amen. by the blood. If you're covered by the blood, you ain't worried about fire and brimstone. If you're covered by the blood, you're not worried about the lake of fire. But instead, you look with a smile to what Jesus said in John chapter 14, verse 1 and verse number 2, as I told you this morning. What did he say? He said, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. That's what I'm looking forward to. Anybody with me on that? Amen. Is that what you're looking forward, forward to Amen. as well? Well, of course, then, you got to get covered by the blood. Amen, somebody. Otherwise, the, the judgment day is going to sneak up on you. And again, it's going to come like a thief in the night. See, we don't know if it's coming through tonight, tomorrow, a thousand years from now. But you know what? When you got your ducks in a row, like we like to say, do you even have to worry about it? When he comes. Amen, somebody. Amen. I look at it the same way. I'm not going to put off having an insurance policy on my house in case there's a fire. Because you don't know when that's going to happen. Houses are so complicated. There's some things in your water that can burn your house down and you'll never see it coming. And then you're stuck saying, oh, how am I going to pay for all this if you don't have no insurance policy? Huh? Get your insurance now. Huh? And make sure you're covered just in case something happens. I look at that for your soul. You see, that it's so, it's so weird that we'll, we'll protect everything but our soul. Huh? We'll put a warranty on the car. Yep. Yes, we will, right? Insurance policy on a house, right? We'll, do, we'll get disability insurance in case we get hurt on our job. All this stuff is secular stuff, but we ain't caring about what lasts eternally, which is our soul. So symbolically speaking, the only insurance policy that you'll ever have to make it through God's judgment and walk through those pearly gates in peace to have heaven as your home is the blood of Jesus Christ. That's why he said John 14, verse number 6, he tells us, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by me. So this is your opportunity tonight if you're not a child of God. Just obey the gospel of Jesus Christ. In other words, how do you paint I'm talking symbols here now. How do you paint the blood on the door frame of your heart today? In other words, what do you got to do to be saved? Well, first you got to hear the word of God. Romans 10 verse 17. You got to believe what you have heard. It's talking about the Bible's testimony about who Jesus is. 
The Bible tells us in John 3, verse number 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believed in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Now remember, a door frame has three edges now. That's just one of the edges. You gotta paint the whole door frame, y'all. And so not only do you have to believe in Jesus as the Son of God, being your Lord and Savior, you gotta repent of your sins. That is, you gotta be willing to turn from a sinful life and lead the life of righteousness that only Christ can prescribe for us. That's what repent means. He tells us that in Luke 13, verse 3 and verse number 5. He says, Except you repent, you shall all likewise perish. You must also confess that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, which is your Lord. You'll see in Romans 10, verse 9 and verse number 10, Acts 8, verse 37. And of course, to completely cover the door frame of your heart with the blood of Jesus, you have to go down in obedience to the word of God in the watery grave of baptism. Jesus said that specifically in Mark 16, verse number 16. He says, he that believes and is baptized shall be saved. He that believes not shall be damned. How do I know that baptism is the blood applied to the door frame of your house? Acts 22, verse 16 tells us about it, right? The Bible says, why tarryest thou? Arise and be baptized, washing away your sins. In other words, that's when you come in contact with the blood. Is that all right now? That's when the blood is truly painted across your heart. And God will pass you by when the judgment comes through for the rest of this world that don't obey or believe in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So remember now, Jesus tells us one more thing after we become a Christian. He says, be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a what? A crown of life. Revelation 2, verse number 10. So in other words, you got to stay behind the blood. That's what you do when you stay faithful. That means keep believing Jesus and obeying it to the end, and you're covered by the blood all the way to the judgment day. And of course, if you're not a child of God, you got to make sure you get back in fellowship with God. If you're, I mean, if you're a child of God that has gone wrong, let me put it that way, you got to get back in fellowship with God by repentance, confession, and prayer if you have done something that you feel is wrong in the sight of God. So we're just going to take a moment to, to sing a song we call a song of invitation that's to give you an opportunity to obey the gospel. Once again, if you're not a Christian, you got to hear the word, believe it, repent of your sins, confess Jesus as the Son of God, take him on in baptism, and remain faithful unto death, and heaven is going to be your home. So we're going to sing that song of invitation. All I want to do, if you come down that aisle, is take your confession. We're going to simply ask you, do you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God? If you confirm your faith, then we'll go down that water grave of baptism, and the blood of Christ will be across the door frame of your heart. Won't you come, as together we stand and sing the Lord's invitation? Won't you come? What can wash